Hello, everyone. I'm Tika Lin. I'm a second-year PhD student from Hans Peter Fister's Visual Computing Group from Harvard University. I'm going to present our work on using augmented reality to provide real-time visual feedback for basketball free throw training. Learning and perfecting a new skill takes practice. For example, developing motor skills like playing a guitar or throwing a basketball requires repetitive practice to reach better accuracy and consistency. Getting immediate and frequent feedback is crucial for rapid motor learning. In our study, we are interested in providing immediate visual feedback to motor skill training. We target basketball free throws because of its well-controlled nature and a valuable skill to any basketball player. Also, the free throw percentage in professional players has remained nearly static for the past 50 years, making free throw shots a valuable testing ground for strategies to improve motor skill learning. There have been a few applications providing real-time auditory feedback for free throw training, such as NOIA and Home Court. However, these systems do not specify precise goals and actionable outcomes to help players reach these goals. As a result, players cannot intuitively know what an ideal arc looked like and how much higher the current shot was compared to the previous shot. AR has the potential to provide immediate and situated visual feedback to the athletes during actual training. This, however, has not been well studied. In our study, we look to understand how people use situated AR visualization in realistic sport training and what aspects of augmented information are useful. To this end, we perform a comparative study between collocated and situated visual feedback on basketball free throw training. We first implement a real-time chart tracking system and design both 2D collocated and situated AR visualizations to provide real-time visual feedback. We then apply both visual feedback systems to actual free throw training with experienced basketball shooters. Finally, we characterize user behaviors and performance through both qualitative feedback and quantitative shot data. In a 2D condition, each player shot a ball with the 2D shot arc feedback shown on a collocated screen next to them. Players could specify the target shot arc using a keyboard, shoot with the target arc, and compare the shot arc after shooting on the screen. We encode the shot outcome in color, green for a make and blue for a miss. Players can iteratively refine their target shot arc during shot training. In the AR condition, the player shot the ball with the 3D situated shot arc feedback directly shown on the HoloLens. Players can use gestures to specify their target shot arc and move the virtual release point. Shoot with the target arc and compare the shot arc after shooting without having to look at an external display. We conduct a within subject user study with 10 experienced basketball players. We counterbalance the starting condition. In each condition, players shoot 100 baseline shots and 600 shots with the visual feedback. In 2D condition, players shoot with the collocated visual feedback. In AR condition, players shoot with the situated 3D visual feedback. In total, each player shot 1,400 shots across 4 days for around 4 hours. To capture user experience and training behaviors, we collect both qualitative and quantitative data. For qualitative data, we collect feedback throughout different stages of the training experience, including pre-study, feedback during training, post-study, and a follow-up survey. We ask participants questions like, what information in 2D is most useful, and perform qualitative analysis by coding user responses. For quantitative data, we collect the launch angle, angle consistency, user-specified target angle, and shot accuracy for each shot. We then compare the shot angle performance between baseline and the end of training, such as shot angle consistency improvement and launch angle shift. Our results show that, first, Real-time visual feedback supports users in refining subsequent shots, and each visualization modality supports distinct user goals. Second, users' shot angle consistency improved with both 2D and AR visualizations during the study. Third, despite the initial impact of wearing the AR headband display, AR visualization promotes a focus on body form and results in a more holistic sense of player performance. Overall, Players favor AR in real-world training if the headset discomfort were to be improved. Finally, we would also discuss suggestions for future sports AR study design in our paper. Please see our paper for the complete results. 
With that, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take questions.